Greetings. I get a lot of um, comments and emails asking about what will happen. Some of it is based on things you've watched, other videos and things. What I'm going to say to this, whatever you listen to, whatever you watch, firstly it's external to yourself. Secondly, after you've listened to and watched a video, how do you feel? What is the feeling you're left with? Is it one of hopelessness or is it something positive? Is it something that has benefited you or is it something that has left you feeling down? I said before, there's a lot of channels out there same as everything else in this life some are unknowingly doing so some are uh, control what would be called, called controlled opposition to take away potential support of things these various rabbit holes environmental issues um, this or that matters and so on Incidentally, while I think of it, time is quite a strange thing. This material world is very much governed by it and we're supposed to sort of be here at this time and do this at that time and so on and so on. But have you noticed, if you're working, how five minutes can seem like an awful long time when it's coming to the end of your shift and likewise when you have days off a whole 48 hours say at a weekend how that will just fly by um, it's perception with everything I've said uh, that this reality is pretty much like a fun fair so let's take a particular ride let's take that giant swing boat as an example with this one this is going with the premise of you are chosen you're already chosen when you, if you're on this spiritual path so you're now in this giant swing boat in the fun fair now depending on where you sit in that swing boat you might want to sit at the ends you might want to experience the highs and lows you might want to be more centered you might want to be sitting on the outside edge in the middle and so on or various other seats on this giant swing boat and your experience is going to be a common one but slightly different oh, I wish that engine would switch off <laughs> um, so it's, it's just where you look round and, and what you observe with everything take for example Mad Max 3 Beyond the Thunder Dome you got a character in there well it's actually two characters called Master Blaster who is running the sort of engine that's keeping this this sort of fairly savage community going and the powers that be which is sort of is the character the character that Tina Turner plays and various others the sort of hierarchy of this community they're sort of held to ransom by what this character called Master Blaster which is basically this little midget guy who's got a very high IQ who's matched up and sits on the shoulders of this retarded, almost childlike, massive giant of a body. So that's the blaster part, the, the physical brawn, and then you've got the the master part, which is a message I think uh, we can all relate to. It's mastering your thoughts. So in that Mad Max 3, they separate off. They only want the brain, they don't want the brawn. And you just look at this reality what's being played out at the moment 
You have a country called India in Dyer, and it very much is in Dyer Straits at the moment. Um, on the pretense of this illusion that has been thrust upon the world since about March 2020, for example, you've um, you've got various governments taking various levels of isolating you, taking away your freedom, um, what you can and can't do, which of course most of human humanity is of jump ship with and are, are falling for it. So India now has a situation where they're probably going to have a million people die of starvation, which I'm sure will be twisted round into saying it's a third wave or a new strain. Yeah, it's a new strain on the credulity of humanity, really. It's how gullible are people. For example, <coughs> I've mentioned it on here and shown how um, ridiculous the Hippocratic Oath is, and it is hypocritical, but how many of you are aware that pharmacists take a version of the oath which again is total hypocrisy <coughs> they are supposed to do things in your best interests of your health but clearly that is not the case and a lot of them are unknowingly doing this they have no idea what they're actually writing out these prescriptions for heaven help those that are knowingly writing out basically death sentences So let's, let me just be absolutely blunt and clear about this. I'm not going to dress this up and sugarcoat this. What I have seen in my mind, you're going to have a situation where I hope there's a few physically fit people out there because I think you're going to be piling up bodies and burning them. Otherwise you are going to have a real health problem. I've described it as a uh, magnetic wave, it's also described as a plasma wave. Also doing the rounds at the moment on social media is about how people can have metal objects now sticking them to them. They've turned sort of magnetic. Again, that's a system's twisted interpretation. That's getting everything material to stick to you. So that should tell you to let go of everything material. Another excellent um, way of describing this is the difference between being a success and being successful. Fantastic author called Marie uh, S. Watts, I'll put the link in on this one. It's a very short 28 minute booklet and it's an audio so you haven't even got to watch it, it's just one to listen to. The difference between being a success and being successful. So you could be a success, for example, and be a billionaire. But the rest of your life is just absolute shit. You're unhappy, you're divorced or whatever. Um, and just generally unhappy with life and yet you've got a fortune. Other people, would, would their perception would be that would give them happiness. And in other people's eyes, they would think that person is a success. Good, that van has gone. Um, but that's being a success, but it is not being successful. But it's, again, it's perception. There are a lot of things you, do, you all do where you are successful. Blinking your eyes, your heartbeats, your organs. Deciding you've got an itch that you want to scratch. It's a successful movement. You don't even think about doing it. It's done subconsciously. So if the minds can do that, now I'll be talking, oh, have we got two minds or have we got one mind? I think it's safe to say that we have one mind that operates in two ways. So what about taking the steps that you use in the successful parts of your life with all the things that you do that you don't think about and then transmuting that into how you act in this external reality? 
So you become successful. That is the basic premises of this Marie S. Watts. And yeah, fantastic writer. Definitely one to listen to up there with Neville Goddard. I say up there, I'm going to explain the levels, as it were, of this. But when you become a watcher to what is going on, you start seeing things in a different way. For example, take the 1881 England and Wales census, it's free online to have a look at. Pick a small village and just look at the occupation column for everybody. Just look at the skills that people had years ago that are missing now. Okay, it could be argued that a lot of them couldn't read or write, they weren't given the opportunities. Likewise, we are not given the opportunities to learn how to become a cord waver and cut leather, how to be a shoemaker, and so on. And then when you bring it up to the present day, just look around at the clothing. How many children can actually tie laces anymore? How many only know Velcro or slip-on shoes or shoes at all? How many people have the dexterity to use a knife and fork any longer? How many people can write? How many people can write eloquently? How many people can add or sub subtract mentally? How many people can't do it without the use of a calculator? I think you get the picture. You'll see it also in concentration levels, I think the, I seem to remember reading that the average span of, comp, of uh, concentration levels of anybody is about eight minutes, probably less. It's, uh, the system gives you the evolution of man, it implies it's getting better and better, but I think you'll see that at least mentally, it is devolving rather than evolving and it is devolving into something that is being merged with something unnatural. It comes down to this, having courage, inner strength, but courage, see our age, our core age, it's within us to be resilient to this what this reality is presenting the whole thing is just one big illusion everything about this reality is an illusion it's just a game of forgetting who and what you are forgetting yourself and then going through this process of remembering you're not being, you don't want to be dismembered, you want to remember, you want to put yourself back together and bring a new order out of the chaos from the external world and create a universe with inside you that is a new order and a new cosmology. This is where it is. I was uh, catching up on videos on Passing By 33 and Danny shows this 13th sign of Fucius. It's always been there, it's, I've shown it as that, um, that dot in the centre of a circle, you are the point, think of it like a clock face, the two hands that point to the 12 numbers come from a central point, hold on a minute, and we're back, there seems to be a thing about people can't have conversations near anybody they have to sort of shout across the street <laughs> and it's all low-level nonsense about uh, the most trivial material things so I mentioned about levels I'm going to refer you back to that Ultravox Rage in Eden album it's nine songs so count them as like nine levels. So if you're listening to channels like this, you've already been through stage one, which is the voice. That's your gut feeling. That's the thing that tells you something ain't right. So where does this come from? This comes from you. 
in the the greater you which is the creator the creator is everything it is in everything it it is all it is in all you are a personified version of it we we forget that we are part of that all we are just an aspect we are just a presentation of that all in this reality but we are part of an all the all knows it is all oh. <laughs> it's um it's way out of anything you can compare to in this reality there is no definitive to it it comes back to this thing about that's shown in the Bible about finding the end well do you know where the beginning is the picture I see emerging is pretty much like that film Terminator where the father has to send the son back whatever date you're born on whatever star sign you're identify identifying with so I'm going to ask you where is the start of the year what do you class as the start of the year so if you're say counting January the 1st we go with a calendar and say that's the start of the year that would mean Capricorn if you're born in Capricorn you are at the beginning so for the Capricorns out there do you feel like you're at the beginning or do you feel like you're at the end or do you feel like you've come into this part way through with this physical vessel and from doing family history research there seems to be a loop a repeat of various things that this vessel has done that are a repeat of four and five generations back I don't know you'd have to look into your own family history and and see compare it with your life compare it with um, what you know of your ancestors as much as you can determine to work that one out it's a truth the truth is known only to one so if you find yourself in that swing boat yeah you're not alone you're not the only one to find that truth but your sitting position in that boat is going to be slightly different so you'll have a different slightly different perspective but you are still all in that same vessel <coughs> the other thing with this you don't have to do this if you really don't want to go through with this which I think would be an awful waste you can check out any time you like as it says in Hotel California song if you really don't want to be here then your spirit can walk out of that body and another one will, will come in and take it over but bear in mind you're never given anything more than you can handle A, there's a lot of you I, I talk to and I recognize you not as your personal identity and name that you are or you think you are but your essence your spirit some of you I can see straight away some it comes a little bit longer it's like there's a lion asleep in there that just needs to be brought out that lion in um, the Wizard of Oz finding that courage I can see it's in there within you the uh, the namaste my soul recognizes your soul as it were so don't concern yourself with trying to change the external and wake anybody up fair enough if they come and ask you and as I said on I think it was the last video be the light in the world while you're in a in a positive state and you're interacting with that external world if the core essence of you is your most positive and the best version it's going to radiate out and people are going to start noticing in the right way and it's like how come this person is so calm and collected and we're all so fearful children you'll notice Oh, this is my experience of it when you go around supermarkets and you'll see young children and they sort of look at you oh there's somebody with an entire face on display 
It's like we've got to the level with the very young where it's become almost normal for them to see people wearing diapers on their faces when they're outside. So now they're presented with, and, and I'm seeing this increasingly, there are more and more full faces in this area. And even those, now we've got this beautiful warm weather, they're pulling these things down so they're, they're breathing through the nose as they would anyway. So it just makes a mockery of the, the whole thing. This, the supposed seriousness of this thing is revealed in the fact that you have no government guidelines and facilities on the disposal of these um, face nappies. There is no incinerators, and you you can you can do go through this exercise as many times as you want. You can write um, requesting under the Freedom of Information Act on various facts and figures, and yeah, you'll probably get truer figures and you'll see they're very different from what the media is presenting but how many are actually going to even listen to that even if you show look, and say look this is published it's a government published document these are the true figures they're still not going to accept it because it's still full of fear so you, it's a it's an awful waste of your time everything in this reality is on loan, it's all temporary. You are not your body, that is temporary. One of the biggest stumbling blocks to this reality is this fear of death. But it is inevitable. Show me anything that is living, that dies. Show me anything material that lasts these days. Most of it is just plastic and it becomes brittle and shatters and you can't buy replacement parts, you can't even fashion the replacement parts yourself. There was a time, go back to the 1881 census, make, do and mend. You would take it to the blacksmith, it will be reforged and it will be as good as new. But we're in this throwaway material world where things don't have a value. And of course the system gives you things that is designed to fail one way or another. It may be through your device no longer will accept updates because they don't do updates for your device any longer so you're forced into replacing it with a new one. Although there's nothing wrong with it or you're faced with the other problem is the uh, device is not up to the job and after a few years it comes to the end of its life. That's the way the world is. It's encouraged to be that way. It's all about consumerism. It is all about consuming. So, magnetic wave or plasma wave that's coming. Your best defence is going to be the most positive version, radiating out the most positive energy. Let them go. We'll see where the... the material world it world is getting you to cling on to things to hold on to the things the spiritual message is about letting go always look in this mirror always see that mirror not just the reflection to see what's going on in this reality so it, it, it begs the question now if it's a magnetic or a plasma wave how is that going to affect the farm animals for which is for a lot of people a food source, beef and pork and chicken and so on. Take for example cattle if they are microchipped, which a lot of them are to um, calculate right down to the millilitre as to how much they can produce as a basically turned into a machine. So it would be a mercy killing anyway. And it would also be rather beautiful in the fact that people can no longer um, keep eating meat. Basically, it's a simple message. You want to get through this. One, I would cut out meat, all meat, because most of it is grown for profit therefore it will be pumped with and injected with loads of things what is the long-term effect on the physical vessel from that for a start 
Alcohol is another one I would say definitely cut out. Just look at the behaviour of people and it means all gall. It's a spirit stripper. Just go with what feels right for you, but I would seriously cut those two out. Um, the rest, well, you can focus on the external or you can do the internal. I mean, do you want to become a prepper? Are you going to store tins of beans and sardines and things? Well, if it's a, a magnetic wave and it's going to affect anything that's metallic, is that food even going to be edible? Have you stored, if you want to go to the extremes of having an underground bunker and kitting it out with for a siege that may last a year, armed to the teeth, like in that film Critters, um, yeah, I mean, you could spend a lot of money on that. You could find yourself buried alive in that, possibly. I don't know. I would personally go for a far simpler thing, but uh, the other part of this is basically, it comes down to this. Start seeing all these actors in this world stage as like Ronald McDonald. It doesn't matter whether they've got robes and a fish hat on, whether they're wearing a white coat, whether they're wearing a uniform, just start seeing them as the clowns that they really are. So you've got a choice here because you have free will. So you can go with the natural and the spiritual route or you can go with the synthetic route. At what cost that synthetic route will be, but you keep popping them tablets, you keep taking the offshoot of the petrochemical industry, it's a business in sickness. I think I know where that's going to end up anyway. Um, some of it is long term and not readily apparent, other things have a ready adverse effect. It's the same with the current madness. Some people are having immediate reactions, some within two days, some it will manifest maybe months or years later. Um, with this magnetic wave it may be ring a ring of roses we all fall down. Let's put it, if we want to put it bluntly and it may be a case of look we've got a serious problem here we've got a load of corpses. Whether those, whether they can be reactive or whether they will just have to be burnt, it may have a Dresden situation. Um, I, I think also of the song Sonic Attack by Hawkwind, you will experience um, ringing in the ears, an ache in the pelvic region, um, oscillating in the diaphragm, bleeding from orifices, quite possibly. Um, it gives, a, I think, a misleading thing. It says your only protection is flight. Um, well, you don't want to be in flight, fight or flight mode. Flight in the sense of retreat within oneself, go into meditation. Find the I am, the I amness in you, and you know that the all, the one, will not is not a self-harmer. This is just, this is the happy harvest. This is picking out the seeds that have been carefully selected. This reality does careful selection with things. It's doing selections in a very different way with identification in various methods. It's the opposite of the spiritual of leading an impersonal life and getting rid of that ego, ego personality part. Anyway, so going back to the Ultravox, there's the nine levels there. You've got the, the voice and it culminates after going through various stages and most of you on this truth seeking level are between what I would call song three and song five where you are feeling your backs against the thin wall. Um, you're still circling round in that rabbit hole of conspiracies trying to put this into some chronological order. So I ask you where if the year starts in December have you come into this story at the beginning or have you come in part way through into this in this en in this endless loop? Will you ever see the beginning? Will you ever see the end? Can you work out the beginning and the end? Why not just leave it? My story is the mystery. It happens in the unseen. Everything starts in the unseen. Creation starts in the unseen even unseen in this even in this reality. A woman becomes pregnant. It is within inside a female body you don't see it till much later on you know the prescribed time of that it's nine months but now we're talking about the metaphysical 
what you create from how you think and how you speak comes into the physical reality. Point and show me something that did not start in imagination. Be it this car, the seat, the seat belt. Go into the house, the table, the light bulb, the windows, the walls. There is nothing that did not start in imagination in this reality and it takes on a physical form. I challenge you to show me anything that doesn't. The system is well aware of this. That, what, that is why it is giving you a script to react to and play in this silly world stage and act a part they want you to act. But you don't have to do that. You can be the observer. And it's... Some of you are saying this is horrible and it's awful and they shouldn't be doing that. Well, why shouldn't they? It's the way it is. They shouldn't be doing that. That's your opinion. And this is the other thing. Somebody says something to you, you're automatically giving them power. If someone says you're, uh, I don't know, you're selfish, by you saying, no, I'm not, and reacting and defending that, you are validating their accusation. Far better to defuse it and say, well, that's just your perspective and your opinion. Doesn't make it true, does it? They may not have the full picture. They may be making a judgment from just a single source. It may be gossip, for example, or it could be on the news. Doesn't make it true. But pretty much everything that is presented to you externally is just an illusion. Whether you see it or don't see it, that is when you get to a point you will see it. But you'll go through these nine levels in this of this rage in Eden and you'll get to the point where you get to song number nine. You go through Don't Fear, The Stranger Within, that's your gut feeling. You go through the ascent on youth and then the ascent and then your name has slipped my mind again. It's those personifications, the names, the labels and things don't matter. I, I mean, I don't know the names of trees and and a lot of flowers and plants and things i know them by science i recognize them and it's oh that's a thing i know what i mean inside me but and i can describe that flower but ask me its latin name i have no idea uh, again it comes back to what it shows you in genesis is it the creator that names everything, or was it Adam, the atom? Was it man? So, let's end with a, a funny story here. There's, there's a, a group of people who call themselves Jehovah Witnesses. Well, Jehovah is taken from a mistranslation. It is actually about 